key parties. Now, once you decide to enter into a securitization transaction, there are a number of other parties than just yourself as the originator and the investors on the other side and the SPV, which, by the way, is a brass plate. The SPV isn't a, a company, a factory somewhere building things or indeed a bank making loans and deposits or originating loans and, and accepting deposits. It's a single purpose vehicle. Um, actually, that's the same acronym, isn't it? Single purpose vehicle, SPV. It's a single <laughs> SPV, special purpose vehicle. It's a single purpose entity. It's essentially a brass plate. The, the legal entity has been set up to affect the transaction. You have some other third parties. The originator I've mentioned, the issuer I've mentioned, the investors are on the right-hand side. They're not detailed here, but we've just mentioned them. You have other, and, uh, other third parties as well. You've got a trustee. Um, in any normal vanilla bond offering, there's a trustee who represents the interests of the note holders. It's the same for a, transac a securitization transaction. You've got to carry on servicing the assets that you have sold to the SPV. Uh, what do I mean by servicing? Issuing statements, collecting the interest payment, sending out maturity statements, uh, undertaking recovery. Uh, sometimes the bank that's originated the assets will continue being the servicer, and sometimes it doesn't. It'll then appoint a third-party servicer to service the assets. Liquidity provider is, a, a, is essentially a bank that makes funding available to the SPV to cover short-term cash flow requirements. A swap counterparty, if you need to hedge the SPV's interest or FX exposure on the liability side, well, the mismatch between assets and liabilities. So a swap counterparty, which is going to be a dealing bank that enters into an interest rate and or a currency swap with the SPV. And then the last one is the rating agencies. Investors will want to see that the notes being sold that they're interested in buying has an investment grade credit rating uh, otherwise they're unlikely to buy it uh, that's why you engage with one or more of the rating agencies the the, the, the publicly the well-known rating agencies moody's s p and fitch uh, and uh, undertake a process to rate the notes uh, which will assist you in selling them to investors my personal experience is much higher with spv credit ratings than with actual normal legal entity credit ratings i've only ever done two of the latter whereas many more of the uh, structured finance ones, but it's exactly the same process in a credit rating. We have got, um, uh, as you would have seen, a credit rating uh, lecture uh, in this uh, program, a credit rating process lecture. Issuing vehicle, the SPV is uh, th at arm's length from the originator. Uh, it's called bankruptcy remote. What that means is if the originating institution, the bank, uh, suffers any credit deterioration or indeed bankruptcy, the assets that it's now sold to the SPV are not part of its asset pool, so it won't be able to touch them as part of its uh, recovery or, or its wind down, its, its administration. That's what bankruptcy remote means. It just means that the, the assets on the, uh, on the uh, SPV's balance sheet are now unconnected to the originator. Issue of profiles vary according to jurisdiction and asset type. Generally in the UK, uh, you've got the standalone SPV or something called a master trust vehicle for repeat issuances. That's common in other jurisdictions as well. You've got some, I'm not going to attempt to pronounce those other names, but they're very similar uh, uh, processes and, and, and legal entity type structures in, in countries around the world. One thing you would have to have in a securitization transaction in place before you could undertake securitization is the appropriate legal framework. You have to have a legal framework that enables an SPV to, to set up to, to buy securities, sorry, buy assets from an originating entity and for the note holders to have recourse to those assets. Um, if, uh, well, the, the note holder has exposure to those assets and if they start to default, the note holder suffers. Uh, but at the same time, it's the class of those, it's the quality of those assets that give the note its underlying credit rating as well as the tranching. Which is why if I simply issued a pass-through note, one, one class of security on the right-hand side, on the left-hand side were sub-investment grade rated assets, then the note on the right-hand side would be sub-investment grade, unless I applied some credit enhancements to the vehicle. Uh, so there, are, there are different types of credit enhancements one uh, can set up. Uh, the tranching is a credit enhancement uh, tool, but some, some in, there are also companies that will provide insurance uh, protecting the note holder if there's any default in the underlying assets, for which the SPV will, will pay a fee. Uh, 